Yep. Have you specifically been told that American POWs have been executed? And even I have not been told that. I have been told that we have a problem uh, with uh, potential capture. I'm waiting to, to, when I get back upstairs, I'll talk back to the Pentagon again. I was told early this morning that perhaps um, uh, our troops were captured. Uh, per, maybe, you know, between the time I left Camp David and here, I'll learn more. But I am concerned about our troops. Obviously, any time one of our soldiers loses a life, I, I, I grieve with their parents and their loved ones. And if there is somebody captured, and it looks like there may be, I expect those people to be treated humanely. Sir, what is your level of confidence that the Iraqi regime will surrender or collapse before U.S. forces need to be engaged in a fight in Baghdad? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, all I know is we got a game plan, a strategy uh, to uh, uh, free the Iraqi people from Saddam Hussein and rid his country of weapons of mass destruction, and we're on plan. Bill and then Mike. Iraqi TV has shown what appear to be American POWs and also what appear to be American dead. I expect them to be treated, the POWs, I expect to be treated humanely. And uh, uh, just like we're treating the prisoners that we have captured humanely. If not, the people who mistreat the prisoners will be treated as war criminals. Mike. President, do you retain hope that Saddam Hussein will go into exile, and are there any active negotiations about that? You know, Mike, I, uh, he had his chance to go into exile. I gave him a 48-hour ultimatum to leave the country so that we could disarm Iraq peacefully. He chose not to go into exile. Mr. President, how concerned are you about the situation in the north and Turkey's uh, statement that they will send troops in there and that Americans might get caught in some kind of crossfire? We have got more troops up north, and we're making it very clear to the Turks that we expect them not to come into northern Iraq. We're in constant touch with the... Uh, Turkish military as well as Turkish politicians, they know our policy, and it's a firm policy. And we've made it very clear to them, we expect them not to go into northern Iraq as well as, and, and they know we're working with the Kurds to make sure there's not the, an incident that would cause there to be an excuse to go into northern Iraq. What do you say to the families of those U.S. soldiers who appear to be killed or captured and are paraded on television? I say to the families, Thank, I thank them for the sacrifice they make, and we pray with them. I pray for God's comfort and God's healing powers to anybody, coalition, for American, Brit, anybody who loses a life in, this, uh, uh, in our efforts to make the world more peaceful and more free. Ed. I am thankful the enemy has not used any weapons of mass destruction. And uh, uh, we will uh, continue employing a strategy to make it difficult for the enemy to use weapons of mass destruction. A couple more and then I got to go. Wait till I talk to them. It's probably best they hear it directly from me. But to your knowledge, is there any chance of getting the soldiers back? Of course. Mr. President, can you see how swiftly you would expect to be in Yeah, good, good question. I, pr I appreciate you asking that question. The question is on humanitarian aid. Um, in the south of Iraq, our coalition forces have worked hard to make the port area secure to make the transit of humanitarian aid as safe as possible. As uh, I was told this morning in my briefings that humanitarian aid should begin moving, massive amounts of humanitarian aid should begin moving within the next 36 hours. And that's gonna be very positive news for a lot of people who've suffered a long time under Saddam Hussein. We've got a massive uh, ground assault going on and right behind it will be a massive uh, movement of humanitarian aid to help the people of Iraq. We have made the promise to the people of this uh, country that we, were, we will do everything we can to protect innocent life, and we're doing that, and that we'll do everything we can to help the Iraqi people.
First thing, of course, will help the Iraqi people is to rid them from a, a brutal dictator, somebody who has uh, stayed in power through mutilation and rape and torture, somebody who starved his own people so he could build palaces, when free from that, from that dictatorship, the life will be a lot better. But we also understand we have an obligation, and this is just not America, it's coalition forces, have an obligation to put food and medicine uh, in places so the Iraqi people can live a, you know, a normal life and have hope. And uh, that's exactly what's going to happen shortly when the uh, area is completely safe enough to move the, move the uh, equipment forward. Listen, thank you all. How are you holding up, sir? I feel just fine.